This is the talk show that takes a no-holds-barred approach to politics, where truth and integrity are the standard and the Constitution honored. From Renaissance Studios, this is Champion News Talk Radio. Welcome to another great edition of Champion News Talk Radio, your choice for the conservative voice, and that's brought to you by championnews.net. This is Carol Parisi, our founder, Jack Roser, and myself. Today, have a gentleman with us by the name of Rich Killian. And Rich, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. Thanks for having me on your show. Uh, Jack, how are you today? Uh, I'm astounded today. This is uh, uh, quite an amazing guy we've got in the program. I don't know all about him, but I know enough. Uh, you own 24 companies? Uh, currently, yes, 24. And, uh, 24 companies. Now, we cannot tell you all of them because we only have a one-hour <laughs> radio show. We're going to go into that. Uh, this is not an advertising program <laughs> <laughs> for, his, for his selling of widgets. There you go. But well, uh, the fact that uh, you can run that many companies... Uh, you you bought a lot of distressed companies. You started some from scratch, but I mainly you found things that you could handle better than the situation. What? Not Tell necessarily. Us. Not necessarily. Um, I actually started uh, 21 of the 24 companies. I, I purchased three of them, uh, and it was it, those were distressed situations where uh -huh. I was able to actually help three that more. owner. But out. 21, you went after the market. I went after the market. Absolutely, absolutely. That was when I was. You know, younger, fresh okay. out of school. Now you're in Illinois, and they're destroying companies. I was uh, uh, two days ago. I was up in Wisconsin mm -hmm. uh, in a uh, company that left Illinois, and I walked through the most beautiful uh, million square foot uh, uh, warehouse and uh, 500,000 feet of offices in an immensely successful company that moved out of Illinois. I've got another uh, man that uh, lives near where I live that has gone to Florida. Uh, there's another company down the street here in Carpentersville. It's gone to Wisconsin. Uh, businesses are fleeing Illinois, and yet you're uh, buying and operating profitably? profitably. These aren't sores for money? <laughs> no. Uh, most, most of my uh, employees, if you want to call them employees, are actually independent contractors. I mean, Prospect Equity is my largest uh, company, which is a real estate company. We have about 600 realtors. As far as on the W-2 side, we have about 50 between the other companies. So, uh, you know, it, it, is, it, is a, it is a problem, you know, with the taxes and whatnot. But um, as, as we mentioned off the air, I, I kind of like the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have to say... Well, it's a big challenge. <laughs> Rich has an online radio show called called Promoting American Dreams. Well, it's the American business person. And, yes. But it, it is Promoting American Dreams. And, and that's mm -hmm. what I'd like to call our show today, because entrepreneurship mm -hmm. is the American dream. And what a privilege, gentlemen. All right, Smarty, spell entrepreneur. E-N-T-R... <laughs> My God, she can. U-E-N-R-E-P. That's enough. You'll prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't, I couldn't say it all the time. No, it's, it, it's, it's, it's even uh, harder to do. <laughs> entrepreneur. It is, it is a great thing, and that is mm -hmm. the American dream. Sure. Now, I am a child of an immigrant, and you are a second or third, third generation. generation. Mm -hmm. Jack, you as well. I can remember my grandfather uh, who fought in the War of 1870 <laughs> against France, for God's sake. You know, sure, we're immigrants. <laughs> well, my, my grandfather came from Palermo, Sicily, my grandpa Salvatore Parisi, mm -hmm. and he was a painter, and he had a painting business. And the cool thing is that he had the opportunity during the Depression with my very... Oh, and now this isn't all about you. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's about, it's about what, entrepreneurship. What? And it's from a small little businessman right. to mm. somebody like you, Rich, 24 businesses. How, how did you start your first business? Well, that's just, you know, I started my first business because I, I couldn't get a job. Um, so isn't I, that a <laughs> blessing? Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> um, no, literally, I graduated, you know, I, I spent some time in the Army. I was in the Army. Uh, got out of the military, uh, got my engineering degree, and this is back in 1999 when I graduated. And long story short, I couldn't find work as a civil engineer. And you know, I applied for 
wow, I don't know how many jobs. This is before LinkedIn or any of the social medias were out there, so it was really knocking on doors. Um, you know, my mom actually was a, was a realtor uh, back in back in the day growing up as a kid. So I always been around, and my dad worked for a real estate company before he started his. Um, he started an environmental company, but. Uh, I, I always been around that real estate, you know, environment, if you will. I'm, he I'm hearing real estate and entrepreneur environment. Though. Sure. Uh, well, but you sure. didn't come from a lot. Uh, no, I mean we were. You know, I would say on the on the lower end of middle class. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up as a kid, grew up on the south side of Chicago. And but you did know you knew things. As far as the the, the street, oh, smarts. You, yeah. street smarts. Yeah, street smarts. Street smart. Absolutely. And somewhat in the real estate business. Sure. You had the feel of it. Sure. Well, uh, you know, uh, I've been asked to speak at a few universities about uh, entrepreneurship, but I'd say one of the first things about it, if you're going to start uh, some kind of, I mean, what, if it's a store selling hot dogs, I don't care, whatever business you start, uh, you ought to know something about it. Please don't start until you figure it out. Oh, absolutely. What. Well, what in the hell Absolutely. is all about? So, so your mom well, was your mom was in real estate. Oh, correct. So I, I grew up. In other words, I always knew that you know real estate was a good, um, I guess, license to have. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, as I'm as I'm, you know, uh, I even went down as as far as UPS. Try, uh, I I went to UPS to be a baggage handler out of college. You know, with a college degree, engineering degree. They told me I was overqualified. Couldn't get that job, so I tried to get everything. I mean, I used to be a bouncer back in college, so I started bouncing again back here in Chicago. You know, working nightclubs just just to make some income, right? To actually, you know, pay my rent. You know, I had three roommates and a, I, four four guys living in a three bedroom. One guy was sleeping on the couch. He paid less rent. But so what I'm hearing from you, you mm -hmm. were doing whatever whatever it took whatever so you took could have an income to have an income. Not where you're protesting people that are rich because oh, oh I am only kidding. Go no, ahead. No, I no, no. I'm put in here too. with with just a, a goofy thing in my own. When I was in the Army, one of my buddies uh, was uh, a bouncer in a Jersey uh, Seashore saloon. Saloon, okay. Yeah, uh, Harry Applegate with uh, big, uh, beautiful cheeks, a <laughs> monster of a man. Uh -huh. and, uh, but I, I liked what he said. Uh, he says, uh, Johnny, he says, I likes to do my fighting in a telephone booth. <laughs> <laughs> Up close and personal. There you go. That works. <laughs> so you, were, you you did what it took to pay your bills, have some money to go out, do whatever. Absolutely. You couldn't find a job. Well, and here it gets better. Okay. So I get my real estate license, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm probably, uh, I, I shouldn't say I wasn't employed. I just didn't have a job yet. So I was, I was trying to use this degree that I spent, you know, four and a half years to mm -hmm. get. And finally got my real estate license and now I'm thinking okay well you know realtors don't get paid a salary you know your your straight commission mm -hmm. so I figured it'd be easy to walk in to any real estate company and say I'd like to hang my shingle in your office well I wanted to do commercial okay I wasn't at that time I wasn't into the whole you know selling houses I saw my mom doing enough of that you know as a kid I you know she used to have me you know, me and my sister riding up and down the streets with the cars, going to the doors, you know, ringing the bell, giving, handing out my mom's If you want to sell your house, call me. Call my mom. You know, <laughs> right. it, it was the, kid, the cute kids going up. You know, it was one of those things. So uh, I started interviewing <laughs> at different real estate brokerages, and I couldn't even get into those. They, they with a license. With a, well, yeah, with a license. I had my license, and before you technically get a license, you know, you pass your test, you right. have to be sponsored. So okay. the long story short with that is, I couldn't even, you know, get into a real estate company, one of the the, the bigger commercial companies out there, uh, and so I started knocking on real estate doors again. I'm thinking to myself, I got an engineering degree, I've, I've passed my licensing, and I can't even hang my shingle for free. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything to hire me. Well, what's I'll pay for my own business cards. What's the deal? Well, it, it comes back to landing my first real estate job. Okay. Um, I was I was so depressed about not being able to get the commercial job that I wanted, selling you know commercial office space or leasing things like that, <clears throat> that I actually was driving down. It was actually out this way. Uh, I, I live when I uh, had the uh, apartment with uh, my roommates right out of college. It was up in the uh, northwest suburbs here. So I'm driving down uh, 72 or well, I forget what road it is, and I passed this this Coldwell Banker office. It's a residential office, right? They're known for residential. I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to just go in and see, see if maybe they need commercial out of this little tiny office. Well, the lady that I talked to mm -hmm. in there uh, directed me to uh, the commercial division leader, which is actually out of this plane. So long story short, she says, call this guy, Ed Up, and uh, see what he can do for you. So I, I called this guy, Ed Up, who was the managing broker. Got didn't return my calls for about 
three weeks. I'm like, you know what? I best just go to the place, show up, knock on the door, and say, hey, I'm here for an interview, which is what I did. Uh, and my managing broker at that, you know, before he was my managing broker, was so impressed that I just walked up to the door and said, you know, basically, I want a job. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm sick and tired of this. Let me work, please. It was tenacity, though. <laughs> well, absolutely. You did not, and that's what a good salesperson does. And well, that's, you have to. <laughs> right. Now, now, you had a college degree. When you mm -hmm. left college, did your parents pay for your college, or did you have a nice, hefty college bill to pay well, after you got out of college? I was in the military, so I was I able know. to take advantage of the Illinois nice. Veterans Grant, plus I had the GI Bill, so my college was paid for okay. through the three years of active service I got it. performed okay. prior. Okay. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. so no handouts. Matter of fact, to, to kind of... To do, real quick on that, I know we're going to have to cut to a break in a second, but uh, interesting enough, you know, when I grew up, a lot of the kids around me, it was, it was I was in one of those families where my parents didn't really make enough to pay for college, but made mm -hmm. too much to actually get the college aid. Yeah, I, I <laughs> that was the you. deal. Mm -hmm. That was the deal. Well, <clears throat> you know what? I am so excited, Jack. This is going to be a great show, and uh -huh. we're going to talk more about entrepreneurship and promoting the American dream. Thank you.